This is a slab of PETG. It is 15% infill, three perimeters, and five top and bottom layers. It's pretty standard, and PETG is relatively impact resistant, but not that impact resistant. This is also a slab of PETG. It is 15% infill, three perimeters, five top and bottom layers, and it's tougher than your cousin Vinny on a Friday night. All right, before I go into more detail about what I did here, let's go back to the beginning. I got the idea when I recently watched a video by Joel Telling, 3D printing nerd, uh, where he was showcasing some multi-material pieces, specifically TPU and PETG. I'll add the link here. But it got me thinking about what functional advantage mixing polymers in this way would have. What would happen if I mixed PLA with PETG? Well, probably nothing good. That would just give me grief. What about PC and ABS? Well, there are already blends of PC and ABS, and these are normally used for flame retardant purposes or ESD applications. Um, but that's a blend. That's, that's not really a composite. We're actually quite limited in what we can mix. And Joel mentioned this. The polymers that we can try to mix should have process and temperatures that are quite similar. So for PLA, that's 205, 2010. For PETG, that's 235 plus. Yeah, that ain't going to go. That's probably just going to delaminate immediately. But that is not the whole story. Like bonds to like, and PLA and PETG won't bond just because they have different processing temperatures, but also because they're just different. PLA these days are bastardized mongrels of different additives blended together to give you the properties that you want. And some of you might have noticed when printing with a MMU, a Mosaic Palette, Bamboo Lab AMS, that if you're mixing two different brands of PLA, you might not get the best layer adhesion. It doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. So going back to multi-material use, Joel chose PTG and TPU because they have similar processing temperatures and similar properties. PTG and TPU are probably the stickiest filament out there. And because of this, stringing is frequently a problem with them. But for us, that's really good because they're going to be so sticky that they will bond together really well. So what advantage does mixing TPU and PETG actually have? Well, it will make PETG more impact resistant and it will make the TPU more rigid, which is pretty useful. Just so you know, there are filaments out there that mix TPU with carbon fiber. But from what I have seen, this just tends to make the TPU less flexible. So for some applications, this is useful. But for me, I want a very, very rigid part, but also strong. Ah, that would be the conflation alarm. So what the hell do I mean by strong? Okay, well, with, with carbon fiber, strong means rigid. So carbon fiber is not particularly impact resistant. It, it is a bit more impact resistant than the base polymer, but in terms of the percentage increase, it's actually not that much. People use carbon fiber film because it's rigid. So in this sense, carbon fiber filament is rigidly strong. TPU is also strong, but not in terms of rigidity. Obviously, it's a very flexible filament. I'm talking about impact resistance. It can take a beating. In fact, if you go to a TDS for a flexible filament, chances are you probably won't even see impact resistance mentioned there because the test that is used on other filaments is just not applicable to TPU because it can really, really take a beating. So that is what I mean by strong in terms of impact strength. So that's the plan. Make a piece that is so impact resistant that it's not even mentioned in the TDS and something that is rigid enough that I can use for mechanical purposes. I'm sure a lot of you have thought of something like this before. It's basically just a composite laminate. Lots of those around. Good example of that would be plywood. I might not be able to get super extreme impact resistance, but I'm not going to cheat and we're going to use very, very standard settings. So 10% infill, three perimeters, four top and bottom layers, that's pretty standard, I think. Let's, let's go from there. So this is our test piece, just normal cube. But on the bottom, we have two layers of PETG and then three layers of TPU. And the rest is pretty much PETG until the top where we get to another three layers of TPU and then two layers of PETG to cap it off. I mean, all we're doing here is putting on a cushioning layer for protection. Hopefully that's going to be enough so that it can actually survive our tests. I also made a longer one with a central band 
and it's actually, it's quite rigid. The slab has a tiny, tiny bit of flex to it. Now these were printed simply by using a color change command in Prusa Slicer and then manually changing the spool when it paused. By the way, if you're wondering why I did this manually and not with an MMU or a palette or a Bamboo Lab AMS, uh, it's because TPU doesn't really play well with those kinds of devices. Uh, the unload and load process is just a nightmare for soft filaments. So you can do it manually, but the best way to do it would be with a straight up dual extruder printer or as Joel used a Prusa XL or other tool changing printer. All right, we have our test piece here and our control piece, which is just regular PETG. Exact same settings, nothing has changed here. I just didn't pause to do a filament change. Okay, let's do some testing. Okay guys, I think I think one band on the top and bottom is probably not enough. We're gonna have to add some extra cushioning. So I think I was a little bit naive in thinking that two bands of TPU would make much of a difference. It made a tiny difference, but not much, not enough. But I've printed a, a few test cubes and some of them vary. Most of them are still the same settings, but others have TPU layers spread through the cube. Uh, some have rather large, thick layers of TPU at the top and the bottom. Uh, another one has very, very high top and bottom layers, up to five layers, actually. I still want this to be like very rigid, so it has to be mostly PETG. Um, it being flexible is a total failure, so it needs to have uh, at least around 90% PETG in it, and so the other 10% has to be TPU. So if it's, if it's, if it's beyond that, then it starts to get a little bit flexible. It's no use, it has to be rigid. So let's give it a shot. Okay, that's good. So results time, this was interesting. I wasn't expecting it. These two guys are just PETG. Uh, this one here has only four top and bottom layers. This one has uh, a few more. And this one totally caved in, it's, it's destroyed. And this was with gyroid infill as well, 15% uh, gyroid infill. Uh, that did not do well. <laughs> this one has triangular infill, it did better. It has a few more top and bottom layers as well. Uh, and these are the ones with our TPU. And these are the ones that just have top and bottom layers of TPU. And they both didn't do that great, actually. Uh, one is very, very thick top and bottom layers. Uh, it has like five. And the other one is, is, is three. And that one actually did better somehow. But the one that did the best, surprisingly, is the one with just four top and bottom layers of solid infill and the rest is 15% triangular infill, and the TPU is spread evenly throughout the cube, so it doesn't have any thick TPU on the top or the bottom, it's just spread throughout, which is interesting. That did really well. Okay, so we did have some issues when we were trying to get this working, and there are drawbacks too. Even with PETG and TPU being super sticky, we did have issues with layer adhesion. So we chose a infill pattern that had overlaps. Initially, we wanted to use a concentric pattern, but these are not overlapping the perimeters or, or themselves. They're just kind of vertical pillars that go up and they're not connected to anything. Uh, because of that, the nozzle had to like jump a gap and then start printing. And because of that, the layer adhesion was abysmal. We also tried this with carbon fiber PETG and again, layer adhesion just wasn't good. We couldn't get reliable results from that at all. 
Furthermore, the advantage of impact resistance is really only advantageous when the impact is perpendicular to the layers. If I was trying this with a impact that is parallel to the layers, it probably wouldn't have the same effect. And while it is more impact resistant, the layer adhesion is a cause of concern with any requirements for tensile strength or flexural strength. It is considerably weaker than regular PETG when used in such a way. Still, I am impressed with the increase in impact resistance we get from this, and I would like to test this with other filaments. The layer adhesion with our PETG and TPU is good, but it would be awesome to try this with a different filament with better layer adhesion. I would also love to try this with our PCTG, which has even higher impact resistance than our PETG. But the best thing for this would be to make it work with PLA so that we can boost the impact resistance because that is a relatively brittle filament. One thing I would love to try is to print a composite bow. So where one side of the bow has a filament with a high tensile strength and the other side has a filament with a high compressive strength. So when you draw it back, there is energy stored in the tensile part and also in the compressive part. That would be awesome. Unfortunately, most filaments don't have compressive strength listed in their TDS. So we'll have to work on that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you found this interesting, you can let us know in the comments below or you can join our Discord server. The link is also down below in the description and we'll talk to you guys next time. Later.